Hi, I'm Dr. Gordon Pritz, Superintendent of Douglas County Schools, and welcome to .edu. Hello and welcome to this edition of .edu. I'm your host today, Kelly Hunter, and here in the studios once again we are highlighting the uh, Douglas County Board of Education and joining me at the table today is Dr. Gordon Pritz, our school superintendent. Uh, welcome. Hi, Kelly. I, uh, you've been out and about today running around. You took the time to come in to sit down with us and I know we have some very important topics that you want to cover. That's the idea of the uh, .edu format here is to allow the school system to have a voice and speak into the community the things that are hot issues and topics at hand. So Very you ready good. to jump in? Oh yeah, we, we appreciate the opportunity to share with uh, everybody what's going on in the school system. All righty. Well, I know that um, as you and I were talking kind of beforehand, we discussed that you are entering into second year term as our school superintendent. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Uh, hard to believe, but it was a fast year and uh, uh, a good year. I was uh, able to uh, get out and see a lot of things and meet a lot of people and that was very helpful to me in getting uh, underway with my job. Well as you went about that venture can you look back and reflect for us give us some of the highlights of that um, jumping out into the school system getting your feet wet getting uh, acquainted with everyone the functions of everything what are some of the highlights that you can bring to the table and share with our audience? Well I think uh, a big highlight is just the fact to uh, that I was able to get out and meet people and uh, see students uh, at work, and see uh, teachers doing great things with the kids and uh, great leadership in our buildings from our principals and administrators. And then a great support system in place with our central office and uh, other ancillary groups that, that help the school system run, our bus drivers and our cafeteria workers. So I think that was probably the highlight for me is getting to know a lot of people uh, and meet people that um, really get the job done every day. And it, it sounds like uh, when you put all of those categories of people and departments together, the school system is a big integrated part, um, multifunctional, different components to it. And so you had to step out there and how did you learn all the names of all of the different people? <laughs> oh, I still don't know them, I can uh, promise you that. But, uh, you know, we do, we do have about 3,500 employees, uh, mm -hmm. so we're a big uh, operation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it takes all of them uh, to be able to get the job done. So they all play an important part to help support our 25,000 students and, uh, and the families. Wow, and those are phenomenal numbers when you throw them out there like that. 25,000 yeah. students, student base, as well as 3,500 employees throughout the, uh, right. the full system. That's a lot. And um, I, I know that just recently the school system uh, had a special recognition and a special award. Can you give us a highlight? And, and I would think that that would also be a highlight just here recently sure. coming yeah, on board. Yeah, Tell I'd us about happy that. To. Well, we were uh, recently named by uh, the Atlanta Journal Constitution newspaper as uh, one of the top workplaces in uh, the, the metropolitan Atlanta area. Um, this is a um, uh, recognition they do, I'm not sure if it's <coughs> annually, but they do it uh, on occasion. And they uh, conduct a number of surveys of employees and they have a company that does that for them and they eva evaluate those surveys based on the responses they get uh, from the employees and these are anonymous so we, we like to think that the employees feel free to uh, share their feelings uh, accurately with the survey. Uh, we were selected in the, in the top 20 of the uh, large workplaces. There's three categories, large, medium, and small. Mm -hmm. And they selected top 20 in the large, uh, which is, uh, I believe, 500 employees or more. And uh, we were number 19 in that group, the only public school system in the state named into the top workplaces. So that mm -hmm. was certainly very exciting um, mm -hmm. that our employees feel like coming to work every day in Douglas County Schools is a great place to be. And, and I would certainly agree. Well, you know, they say if you enjoy what you're doing is work, that you'll be able to do the best job that you can. So that's that's quite a, I guess, an acclimate for you, first of all, right there at the top as the, the superintendent. Um, that must feel good to know that you have that record behind you. Well, it it's refreshing to know that if, and I think important for our parents to know that if, uh, 
if the the folks that are working with their mm -hmm. kids every day feel good about what they do and where they come to work, then that's going to trickle down to the school culture and the atmosphere in the school. And so it has a, a positive impact, I think, on our kids that they uh, have people that care about them and people that mm -hmm. invest in them and are willing to uh, do whatever it takes to help the, the children progress. And I'd have to vouch, I have several friends that are uh, teachers or associated in the school system in different job functions and, and everyone is very pleased. So that's a great, great, great acclimate to have. Thank you, we're but, excited about that. And a lot of new things happening. Uh, we've got our uh, fifth high school opening up this year, we this do. Uh, do. coming school year. Tell yeah. us about New Manchester. Well, it's been a busy year. We had uh, you know some budget challenges uh, getting started when I first came in and then uh, very soon into the fall after the uh, school year got underway, we had to um, make some decisions about our districting uh, for the new mm -hmm. high school. New Manchester High School will open up in uh, August and uh, we will have about 1,300 kids that we think will be attending there. But we had to go through the redistricting process with uh, our four other high schools and so that was a, a very challenging uh, process for us to go through. but. Uh, uh, in December, the board approved the district lines, and then we uh, hit the ground running at that point with the plans for New Manchester. And so, uh, Miss Connie Kraft, the principal over there, and uh, has assembled her staff pretty much uh, complete now. That's good. And uh, they're taking, getting furniture in every day, and getting the school set up, and they'll be ready to go come August. So they're taking care of those last minute details. Uh, they'll be doing that right up to the last minute. And you know August is going to be here before we can blink an eye, I'm sure. Oh yeah, <clears throat> it will be. And uh, yeah, the summers seem like they get shorter every year, but uh, we, <coughs> we have a lot to do still, but we've made a lot of progress. Moving towards it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you also mentioned um, the budget word. And right. um, I know, as you mentioned, that coming in, that was a big um, factor that you had to take a, take a look at, the economy that we have been in and, and um, I guess had to sustain through the down economy here. What are some of the things that the school system has had to adjust or look at uh, compensating and, uh, for deficits that, that might be there? And this is a challenge, <coughs> excuse me, that not only Douglas County has faced, but statewide. Well, statewide and, and nationally, nationally, you know, we sure. have the challenges uh, throughout the nation with our down economy and then uh, the way that schools typically are bud uh, get their the budget monies, mm -hmm. their fundings. Um, so when the economy is down, our cash flow is obviously less than when property values are down, which is another mm -hmm. funding source for us, we, we uh, experience that cutback. So when you combine those, um, it hits us pretty hard. And the challenge for us is that we essentially have the same job to do, but we have less uh, finances to do it with. and. 90% of our uh, budget is personnel or people. So we have very little or very few areas to look at when we have to make cuts. And it's uh, difficult for us to find in that 10% where we can make cuts because typically those are your utilities and bus uh, fuel. And so we still have the same buildings to heat and the same right. uh, buses to run. So we invariably have to come back to the personnel part of that, the 90% and look for ways to, to uh, make some savings there. And when you do that, of course, you're talking about uh, services that people are providing or programs and, and certainly employees. So it's very, very difficult. Uh, we're not like a business where we maybe can cut some other areas. We have to look at uh, um, employees oftentimes. And I'm sure that each of those programs that have been implemented, they have uh, already been validated that there's the need and the that the resource should be available. So that's got to be a tough decision to, to determine, looking at those, what, what are some of the things that we need to reassess or reevaluate or maybe even pull from yeah. the program? Well, it's very difficult because we do become, as you say, kind of accustomed to those services and those programs. And uh, the state doesn't uh, always uh, fund everything that we do mm -hmm. in our schools. You know, we, uh, we aren't fully funded for our performing arts, so and that's something that's very important to the citizens of Douglas County, and it should be. Should be. But those are those almost become extras, if you if you will. Um, we don't view them as extras. We think they're essentials, but we get in times like these, we have to look at everything. But the funding source for them becomes then, uh, I guess, more of an optional. So yeah. I guess that's where the band boosters and the um, uh, other parent organizations, I guess, step in to help and right. maybe reconsider 
when you get, get that knock on the door for um, the support for those different entities? Right. Well, our, our funding sources, as I said, are, are very uh, defined and very limited. Mm -hmm. So we're oftentimes looking for other ways to, uh, to you know, fund the um, programs that are important to us that we couldn't normally do. Sure. Well, uh, Dr. Pritz, as we've been talking, and you mentioned on the budget, what are some of the things that you're looking ahead for the next school year, the 2011-2012 school year that, that Douglas County is going to have to face right. with their budget? Well, we, uh, we've been in the uh, planning stages here about the last, um, actually about the last four or five months, but most recently we've gotten our allotment sheets, which are budget sheets from the state. Uh, we got those about a week and a half ago. Um, and they were, uh, it was not good news. Um, mm -hmm. we, we are going to experience some uh, state cuts once again. We uh, uh, are looking at about a $17 million deficit that wow. we're going to have to make up, find a way to make up. So that's a big challenge for us. We have uh, about a $190 million budget. So when you talk $17 million out of that, um, that's a major uh, cut it for is. us. Quite a bit. So we'll have to look at, um, you know, doing things. Uh, look at positions. We've got to look at positions again and we'll look at uh, real r real hard at positions at the central office once again. We'll we'll reduce some teaching positions as well. Um, we will have to probably look at furlough days uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's uh, not a good thing but uh, it uh, is better for our employees than a reduction in salary. Even though it is a reduction it, it doesn't hurt them quite as bad as far as the long run in their retirement uh, salaries. So we'll have to look at that. Um, uh, so we'll, we, we've got a challenge ahead of us and sure. it will be very, very difficult. But uh, the thing that I'm encouraged by is that um, our employees seem to rise to the occasion and understand mm -hmm. that these are uh, very unique and difficult times in education and we'll get through it and it will get better. But uh, when it's difficult like this, people just uh, rise to the occasion, and I'm sure they'll do that again. Well, and I know difficult times like this call for those those type sacrifices, those type of uh, commitments, and it's good to know that the um, personnel that you in, uh, employ and that you oversee have that kind of heart, even during this challenging time. Well, you know, I, I think you're exactly right. They do have that heart, and I think most of them would, uh, all of them would say they don't do it for the money, but, mm -hmm. you know, you do have to you do have to provide for your family for your and, and have sure. a comfortable lifestyle. So it is difficult, but uh, they, they do it for the love of kids, and um, that's what probably makes it even more difficult to look at cuts when you know that that's their motivation. Sure. Well, I know this November um, on the um, election ballot, the uh, Douglas County School System is looking to introduce another funding source on the ballots. Can you tell us about that East Bloss program? Uh, we have been very fortunate in our county, uh, first of all in our state, to have an alternate or an additional funding source, and that's the special purpose local option sales tax. We usually refer to it as SPLOST. SPLOST. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are um, uh, given the option with our voters to uh, fund uh, through a one penny sales tax on the dollar. Uh, an educational uh, SPLOST, and so we refer to that as the East SPLOST, and the, uh, the citizens of Douglas County have supported three of those. So we are finishing up, uh, we're in the last year of our third 1% uh, sales tax for education, and that will come to an end in uh, December of this year. Okay. We, uh, the school board has determined that we still have uh, very important needs mm -hmm. that this special purpose tax can support. And so they have um, agreed to go to the voters in November to consider um, extending that for another five years. It would not be a new uh, tax, it would okay. be an extension of the current one. And so uh, we will go to the voters in November to ask um, their approval of that continuation of that one cent sales tax. And uh, understanding a SPLOST program, that's uh, the, the tax that's brought in. It's not just a, a tax base that the people and the residents of our county support, but from outcome, uh, outsource um, people coming into our county right. and, and making um, goods of our services and, and tax base here. They add into that, mm -hmm. and, and it makes a difference for us. Well, that's one of the beauties <laughs> of a special purpose local op option sales tax is that it can be and is funded by people who live outside the county when they come to 
our county and visit our malls and, right. and stop and uh, visit stores and restaurants. Uh, our students benefit from the, the sales of, uh, of their purchases. So uh, it is a, um, a benefit of that tax and it's others helping us pay for our schools or pay for technology in our schools. Okay. And so we're not looking at this current SPLOST actually expiring unless, uh, or what you're actually doing is introducing to the public to extend this, like you said, for a, a, a five-year right. longer term. It's, uh, the, the current one will run out in December. This mm -hmm. one, December 31st. This new one, if approved, would start January 1st. So there'd be no break, um, in it, but it would be a, a continuation of what's currently in place. Okay. Can you give our viewers an idea of what these sales tax dollars, because there, there's specific guidelines mm -hmm. that you have to follow. Um, it, this isn't funding, if I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, this isn't a funding additional um, uh, employees right. or additional personnel. It has to be specifically designated and used. Can you give us an idea sure. of how that's been, been allocated? It, it, is, it is very defined, and that is another plus to this type of funding is that the uh, regulations and laws governing it are very defined as to mm -hmm. uh, what we have to use it for. So it's very transparent with the with the community, and that you know we're gonna we're gonna go ask them to approve it, and we're gonna tell them what it's gonna be Where used for, going. and right. then we're gonna demonstrate that we used it exactly for what we said we were gonna use it for. So the law allows us to use this one penny sales tax for uh, construction of schools, mm -hmm. for renovation of schools. Uh, to provide resources to our schools like technology, computers, um, textbooks, those types of things. And very importantly, it allows us to use part of the, use the money to uh, uh, pay off bond indebtedness. Um, we went through a period of very rapid growth in Douglas County where um, even though the one cent sales tax was in place, it couldn't keep up with the need for schools. And so we had to borrow money to build schools. And uh, we have uh, some debt out there that we need to diminish, if not get rid of eventually. Sure. And this um, uh, this one cent sales tax will allow us to pay off those debts. And and the school board wisely uh, decided that 50% of what uh, this new sales tax would bring in uh, will go towards paying off that debt. So, in fact, what voters would be uh, agreeing to is mm -hmm. a reduction in the millage rate, reduction in their taxes. Uh, so they actually would be voting themselves a tax reduction in that respect. Uh, so we th feel like that's very important for voters to know. Sure. Um, and I commend the school board for uh, coming to that agreement at the 50% level. So we, that is a defined amount based on the amount of money that comes in over the five-year period. Well, I know that we're excited that we're allowing you the opportunity to um, initiate and, and get the message out that this SPLOST is be coming back up on the ballot again in November. If any of our viewers or anyone else would like more information about about the SPLOST or the, the program and how it, it works or anything, is there somewhere that they can contact the school board, the school offices there? Right. Well, certainly they can contact uh, my office and uh, okay. we will get that information. But we will have a uh, link on our website okay. uh, very soon in the next month or two. <coughs> and this uh, link will have information, um, general information about the SPLOST and what it is and what it does and what the uh, past uh, SPLOS have done for our, our county. And then uh, we will have information on there on what the f this SPLOST, should it pass, would do the types of projects that would be funded, the uh, reduction in the uh, bond indebtedness that would take place. So we'll have a link on our website that will be very um, comprehensive in terms of the information on the SPLOST and what it's all about and, the, and what it does for us. We're hoping that this is a SPLOST that finds a, uh, a good support here in Douglas County and uh, hope, it, hope well, it comes to fruition we're, we're, November the 8th. We're committed to uh, be very deliberate in our presentation of the SPLOST and what it does. We uh, will get out to many of the civic organi organizations, to the schools, to make presentations. Okay. Um, so we're looking forward to that opportunity to help provide that information to the citizens so they can make a, a very educated uh, decision come November. And, uh, and I say again, the importance it, it does. Number one, it's going to pay off that bond indebtedness and lower millage rate taxes and then it will provide for our kids by uh, the renovation of schools, our older facilities that are needed. We don't have to build any new ones because we've slowed down in growth 
and then the technology needs in our schools, which uh, keep our kids uh, equitable with other kids in other districts and keep them competitive in the as they finish up their education and go into the job market. Well, sure. Well, it sounds like a good thing. I appreciate you taking the time Thank with you, us, Kelly. Dr. Pritz, to uh, explain it to our viewers. And My pleasure. As, as again, as we close out, we'll have that website, telephone number for them to uh, make contact. And we want to invite uh, the viewers that if you, you've given the opportunity, if you would like to have someone from the school district, school board, come out and present the SPLOS program to your organization, please feel free to call your offices. We would be very, we'd feel privileged to be able to do that. And we'd love to do that. All righty. Well, thank you for being with thank us you. on .edu. And we'll join you again next time with more information about the Douglasville, Douglas County school system here in Douglasville.